Andrei Korobkov joins us now. He's a professor of political science and international relations at Middle Tennessee State University. Professor, thank you for your time. Does President Putin's admission that Wagner doesn't exist as a de jure entity open up Wagner's members for international prosecution? Well, ironically, uh, Wagner really did not exist legally until uh, 2022. In 2022, it was registered in Russia as a kind of uh, private uh, organization. Uh, there are many such organizations that offer security services to, uh, say, private companies. Uh, the Kremlin is in, in a very weird, one can say, position, because it wants to retain Wagner as a, a fighting force but uh, it wants to get rid of uh, Prigozhin. And therefore, they started all this maneuvering uh, based on the principle of divide and rule. They are trying to make deals uh, with uh, uh, commanders within Wagner, including Troshev that you just men mentioned, the so-called Sidoi, uh, and at the same time uh, to uh, push uh, Prigozhin out. But the uh, problem is, and we don't know that uh, the level of popularity of Prigozhin within uh, Wagner ranks, uh, the Kremlin definitely got uh, scared in June, uh, realizing that Prigozhin has developed uh, a very serious following that goes well beyond Wagner. And now it is uh, trying to achieve these two tasks simultaneously. On the one hand, get rid of Prigozhin, on the other hand, retain uh, Wagner, yes, as a part of the conventional military, uh, but uh, still retain it as a fighting unit. We'll see uh, how successful the Kremlin would be uh, well, in achieving these goals. Do you think there's any credibility in the question about whether they could be prosecuted because of the number of people they must have killed in their operations in Africa, the people they must have killed during their operations in Syria? Let's forget Ukraine at the moment, because if they didn't exist as a legal entity when they were fighting in African countries and while they've been fighting in Syria, will any of their members be concerned that with the Russian president admitting they don't exist as a legal entity means they're literally illegal combatants? and that they could be open to prosecution? Yes. Uh, although we have to take into account that, uh, especially in regard to Africa, they were formally invited by specific governments, for example, in Mali, and uh, uh, they could use this as a cover-up. Mm. But basically, yes, the Kremlin creates a legal pass uh, for uh, their pr uh, prosecution if they want to do it. But right now, as I said, it wants to, uh, well, push uh, Prigozhin out, but it wants to retain, uh, well, the military capabilities of Wagner, maybe divided among different uh, uh, defense uh, de uh, ministry uh, subdivisions, but retain it. And if it starts going after its leaders, it uh, uh, can create very serious problems. Therefore, uh, the action would be delayed. There might be an investigation, and it started already, of mm. Prigozhin mostly for financial violations. Putin earlier claimed that uh, uh, the uh, Russian government has spent more than a billion dollars uh, to finance Wagner operations during the war, uh, during the war in Ukraine. And uh, they will go after Prigozhin and uh, Prigozhin loyalists this way, most probably, while well, claiming that they uh, were involved in very serious financial uh, machinations uh, in uh, basically stealing state money. But they would not want to create right now a precedent uh, claiming that uh, uh, the group did not exist legally and therefore its members were involved in uh, uh, well, legal violations. And it's not only a matter of Ukraine. Wagner continues to operate uh, on uh, a large scale in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, Wagner has moved to Belarus, and uh, there are reports that it is uh, training the Belarusian army. And, uh, uh, well, the Kremlin would want to uh, guarantee the loyalty of, the, of those groups and the continuation of their work that's uh, viewed as very important for... Professor, if you don't mind, we're going to run out of time. So if you could be brief with this final answer. How surprised are you with the way the Kremlin is dealing with the fallout from the failed mutiny? We still don't know how many Wagner members have joined the Russian military. And the way that Putin is treating his 
former friend, maybe still very good friend, Yevgeny Prigozhin. When people cross Vladimir Putin, they usually end up dead. Yes, uh, there's nothing surprising about it. Uh, again, well, it, it wants to achieve two goals at the same time. Retain Wagner uh, as a military force, even uh, while well, dividing it, and at the same time to get rid of Prigozhin. And not only because Prigozhin was involved in this mutiny, but because uh, Prigozhin is becoming a charismatic figure and is perceived as a danger to uh, Putin personally. And thanks for the brevity, Andrei Korobkov. Thank you so much indeed for your time.